Good morning. Just about four miles in to Lancaster. The forecast for right now is clear blue skies and sunshine. Well, that's all right then, isn't it? Even though it's still quite mild, the canals and the boaters are beginning to settle down and hibernate almost for the coming winter. The cycle of nature continues. Despite attempts to rename the seasons, I shall forever call them Autumn, winter, spring and summer. After Gallgate, the Lancaster Canal widens up. Yeah, I think you were actually on the wrong side of the canal there, mate. Yes. We've had some good rain these past few nights and even though the underlying sort of trend across the country is still quite dry, somehow Canal and River Trust are keeping the canal levels up and managing to keep most of the system open. There are the reservoirs to feed the canals, reservoirs which were built originally to serve the canals. The problem is nowadays, and as a result of when the canals died out back in the 50s and 60s, the reservoirs are now used predominantly for providing water to houses. So it's a constant battle over who gets the water. A lump of crud and once again I'll have to go into neutral because no weed hatch should anything get tangled up Whee. middle of October and you can still feel like a warm wind the warmth of the front that's causing it I remember this bend, tight and blind, but I can't see the roof of a boat. If 
very reminiscent of the remote areas on the Leeds and Liverpool Canal, up in the Pennines. problem with deep drafted boats, you go through a narrow gap and there's very little water under the boat and going through the prop so you just lose all forward momentum. And there's another clump of crud up here so I'm going to have to coast through that as well. too many of those. What do you do with a boat that doesn't have a weed hatch if you get something wrapped around the prop? Scuba gear or waders? But at some point you're gonna have to get your head under the water. No thanks. I imagine that's when you just get on the phone and Call a man. I tell you, all, clear that, will you? Thank you. All. a shallower section of canal. Not so much drive. If, as a lot of people do, you just give it more gas, all you're doing is washing more water out from under the boat. So the boat sinks a bit lower and you have less drive. So the best thing to do in that situation is ease off the gas. Allow the boat to lift a little bit. Work the engine less hard and safe fuel. These aren't speedboats. The main thing is though that we're moving. Mercy of mercies. disconcerting this. Constantly in the back of your mind is this thought that you're suddenly going to ground and just stop. Rather like with that tree. And then what do you do? I thought that tree was the, uh, the final test. But it ain't over yet. No way to build up any speed. If I get through this, I will consider it a miracle from up high. Surely the canal must deepen after this bridge. How 
hell did I get through there? Hey, I think we're moving. Wow, we're underway. Oh, thank heavens. Starting to touch the outskirts of Lancaster. There's another little problem which I didn't anticipate, and that is that both of the SD memory cards on my video camera here are almost full. Typically, it's not an issue because on Aslan, of course, I'll have my laptop. At the end of each day's filming, I put all the video clips on the laptop and back them up and then wipe the memory card. just under this bridge then and it would be nice if there was a mooring in the basin but if not I'll have to turn round which I've got to do anyway and go back down to those visitor moorings just a bit further back down the canal there entering the basin and there is indeed room well that is a surprise Time to turn round. so deep, she's stuck in the actual turning area. This is crazy.
Now, if you have a historic canal boat and you happen to come to Lancaster, don't turn in there. Do you hear me? Are you listening? Well, at least I can get to the edge. Right, I'm going to go up here and more up and save my memory card. So I'll see you when I've pulled over. I made it. The canal's quite high at the moment. You know, apparently in the uh, sort of August time, it was quite low. Uh, there's no way I'd have done it then. And she spent her entire life working life on the Grand Union Canal. I would say north of here anyway, she's not really suited to the Lancaster Canal. Fun. There you go. Right. Now let's take a little stroll into Lancaster, have a coffee and a, a look around. I'm often asked what's it like in these boat of service points. So here's a very quick tour. This particular one is split up into two sort of sections. You have this one here, you have a lavatory, a sink with soap and uh, hand towels in this one. Yeah, good looking guy. And a shower, which I will be having later and the same in this one toilet sink hand dryer and a shower all access to buy the special waterways key and free to use as in it's included in the annual license fee Gorse and I finally made it then. Uh, I'm going to go for a shower in a minute, I think. <sighs> There's just one small problem. I just checked emails and I received a notification that the Lancaster Canal, about two miles north of Garstown, the direction I'm going to be heading back, is closed. A, in the middle of the night a car by whatever means lost control at the bridge careened off went through all the stonework on the side of the bridge and fell on its side in the canal and the guy's okay the canal is now closed for an unknown period again uh, obviously the police and uh, Canal and River Trust have got to lift the car out of the canal. Uh, they've then got to remove all the sandstone or granite blocks that are now littered on the canal bed. I've got some provisions, but I can't get any further than Cabus Nook is the area. 
So I'll either spend my time at Goldgate waiting or at CRT Yard again. Well, I made it back. Phew. It's worth pointing out that for that entire project, from start to finish, uh, from leaving Aslan, travelling all the way up to Gorse, cruising, filming everything, travelling back to Aslan, I originally estimated about uh, six, maybe seven days. In the end, it took 16. But I got there in the end. Talking of getting back, uh, the bridge where the van flew off the side and into the canal um, that happened at around about six o'clock of the evening when I was in Lancaster now I set off the following morning towards Garstang fully expecting as I'd said in the video to moor up somewhere and wait uh, but during the night the police had uh, brought in a crane lifted the van out uh, and CRT had gone in the canal, removed all the sandstone and granite blocks and the canal was open. Since I've been back then and I've been working my way through producing these videos it's given me time to uh, think about and reflect on uh, my time with Gorse and I thought it would be a jolly jape, what what, to have a little uh, scoring system sort of a Brucey Forsyth, nice to cruise you, to cruise you, nice. Uh, so I've come up with a one, two, three, four, five categories um, to sum up my experience and uh, sort of opinions of course. And the first category is condition. And all of these I'm going to give marks out of 10. Now with Gorse, bearing in mind yeah, she was first commissioned in what was it 49 47 49 and uh, she was completed in 51 yes large parts of her have been replaced over the years um, but the main sort of stern and so on the the back half is original and she's been added to uh, and so on um, externally paintwork fabulous um, not a hundred percent as you would expect I mean she's what say 1950 so she's 72 years old uh, the inside well I mean the fit out that was done by the previous owner Fred my word um, it, I mean it wasn't like specific to the 1950s but the standard of workmanship um, was just absolutely fabulous the engine room well you know I mean as engine rooms go it doesn't get much better than that I mean, what a space to just stand and look at the engine perhaps give it a little polish or even just stand by the side hatch on a nice day with a nice cup of tea watching the boats go flying by the bed oh I mean the the bed was uh, absolutely fabulous the, the whole inside of the boat was just um it was just superb um, so for the condition, I'm going to give her an 8 out of 10. I mean, if it was 10 out of 10, it would be a new boat. 9 out of 10 would be almost new, so an 8 out of 10. Uh, next up is cruising, the, uh, the the general cruising experience. And I have to take into account that uh, Gorse isn't really intended for shallow waters like the Lancaster Canal. I, mean, uh, I found out on a couple of occasions, like when I was trying to move the boat you know, off the tree, and when I got stuck in the turning circle point with the barge pole um, I would hit silt and it would sink about I would say another foot before it hit the clay at the bottom uh, so I mean the, the, yeah the Lancaster desperately needs dredging on a proper canal so to speak like the Shropshire Union or Grand Union Trenton Mersey I imagine she would be you know an absolute delight um, so I've got to take that into account so the cruising experience I'm going to give her an 8 out of 10 for that as well because it's not fair to mark her down due to the canal. 
next category, uh, liverboard. And this is more of a sort of a personal thing based on my experience of, you know, like living aboard, um, you know, on Aslan. I mean, I have Aslan fitted out sort of pretty much how I want for liverboard, not just sort of like, you know, equipment and things, but things like uh, LED lighting. Um, of course, as I said in the tour video, doesn't have LED, she has the old style halogens, which are an exceptionally old fashioned and very, very inefficient, power hungry way of, of providing light. I'd fit another leisure battery, Gorse only has one. Uh, and also I'd uh, have some sort of solar. Um, I've, I've spoken to the owner about it and she, okay, people, people naturally assume that the owner is a man, but uh, the owner is a woman. Um, doesn't want to have ugly solar panels on the roof, but if she, you know, if she was mine, I'd either have some really thin, flexible self adhesive ones, um, or a freestanding unit that I could just put on the roof as and when required. There's no inverter, which I would need um, to mainly charge my laptop. Um, what else was there? Oh yeah, there's no, there's no fridge, um, which having spent some time on gorse isn't really a massive problem because she has a, a hatch under the floor at the back um, into the bilge which is always you know nice and cool um, and that's where I kept my milk and cheese and butter and so on and it, and it worked a treat. The liverboard experience I'm going to give her a five out of ten. Don't shoot me. Next up desirability <clears throat> and this is also you know this is a more of an emotive subject you know it's based on desire um, and for me and, and for many people many of you out there there's nothing more ideal than a vintage twin cylinder chugging diesel Aslan's engine Gorse's engine a lot of people said they miss the purr of Aslan and they like the purr of Gorse vintage traditional engines don't purr they chug or thump they go dum 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 modern four-cylinder engines purr they're more of a but uh, anyway i digress there um yeah so desirability um she looks fantastic she has that age and that patina the history the provenance as they say in the art world and i'm going to give her a nine out of ten for that because uh, for me it doesn't get much better than that Right, so overall, um, which is just, a, it's really an average of all the scores I've given, I'm going to give Gorse an 8 in the desirability stakes. Uh, sorry, not in the overall stakes. <clears throat> cool. I've got a frog today. Too much talking. Right, we're nearly there. And uh, firstly, I want to thank the owner. As I say, the owner is a she, a, a woman. Um thank you very 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 much uh, quite a it was a privilege um, a unique experience um, and it uh, not only was it nice to have a different boat to you know sample and travel along it also got uh, the old sort of creative juices going uh, things can get a little bit stale at times if you're just doing the same thing over and over which is why I like to add a little bit of variety um, not only for my viewers for those that want to see something a bit different like I did the camping videos oh, I got it in the neck for that I tell you and uh, motorbike stuff you know yes it was it was a privilege thank you right that's it then and uh, yep don't have nightmares and uh, cheers for now